Today we are breaking down a 20 plus kill game here from Joe, which if you've played Warzone 2, you know just how difficult that actually is. So today we're going to be learning from Joe, really paying attention to how he did it. And I want to focus on three main things, his gameplay strategy, his pace of play, but most importantly, what I think we're all struggling with, how do you even find 20 plus people on this map? Now we're going to jump in here immediately with one of the best ways to go about finding people proximity chat look we don't know exactly where somebody is but it tells us that somebody is around us and joe's going to use that a lot throughout this game to find people and then he starts to figure out okay where exactly are they now the other thing is he's going to hear shooting in this little building right here he can go third party this right he understands it's two teams he's going to throw the flash which he uses for information right he's obviously hoping to flash the guy but it also confirms that somebody is actually in there and he can push he's going to do this in like another minute which we'll take a look at now he pushes in he's able to get the first white but he also needs to understand okay there's still potentially people around here it's one of the biggest adjustments that rebirth or resurgence players have to make is constantly keeping your head on a swivel you've got to always be assuming that it is a full team you know when joe sees somebody he's assuming that it is two players he's in solo duos by the way so a little bit tougher to do and that's part of what helps him drop that 20 kill game but when you're in trios and quads and you see one player you can't just hyper here, focus on that one player you've got to be thinking about everything going on around you and the fact that there could be a full team that is very close by. Now, another thing that we're going to be paying attention to here is UAVs. Does he pop UAVs? He pops some, but we can't rely on those as much as we used to because you can't really buy them. There's limited amount at buy stations. By the way, real quick right here, these actually sometimes hold self reses. So make sure you're checking these and, and seeing if there's a self reviving there. That could be super beneficial for you. Now, he's going to go ahead and push in here. He happens to get audio. Audio is awful right now, but he happens to get it. And watch how he uses the flash, right? So he uses the flash to understand where this guy is. And the guy actually gets flashed, giving him that easy kill. Now, once again, he's going to catch this guy back here. He's going to use the flash now to actually flash him. He has the information. Now he's just going to use it so that he doesn't get shot back. He's able to easily pick up that kill right there. Real quick, by the way, as we're really getting into this, if you are looking to get better at Warzone 2, I've got you covered. Loadout videos, tip videos, gameplay strategy, how to position yourself, everything that I can think of to allow you to become a better player, ultimately be the best player on your squad. Make sure you are subscribed down below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. But now when we're talking about looting guys make sure you're disposing of stuff you don't need he wants extra plates he definitely wants the vest he wants the ammo but he doesn't need the shotgun ammo he's not going to be running a shotgun so make sure you're disposing of stuff that you don't actually need the Wait, other thing to highlight right here which he's going to do is he can hold double self revive so especially for like end games or in solos you can burn this self and then put the one from your backpack into your self revive slot that's a huge advantage we can also if we find medium and large backpacks we can actually hold a third gun so you could be you running right sniper AR and SMG if you find a because medium and large backpack and that really sets you up for any end game possible now he's going to go ahead and start to figure out where people are uh, one tough part about yeah, this I game so. is we don't really have a ton of information let me go ahead and fast forward here because I know exactly when he's going to find people we're going to go ahead and fast forward but you can't really pop unlimited UAVs there's no mini map pings from people actually shooting and audio is not great so really we have to rely on what we are seeing the other thing I will say and I haven't really explored too much with this but i think bounty contracts are going to be absolutely meta because it not only gives you cash which cash flow is a real struggle in this game and he, joe actually just said it but also it tells you where people are it's that information component now he's going to go in and fly right here you're going to once again see him play this he's going to see this guy right here in a second he's flying down and this is a big br strategy right here this is big nap you're flying up above and you're just trying to see anything that you can this is a great way to get information he's going to catch a little guy right down there he is he's right there you can kind of see him moving right there and joe's going to kind of push towards him he's going to play his high ground and he catches him right here again now he automatically assumes there's two people he can of course go challenge this guy and he's able to get that down right there He's not quite able to get the thirst. He's going to get the thirst in a second. But he's already thinking, there's got to be more people here. You know, there it can't just be one enemy. Now, maybe it is. But you've got to at least have your head on a swivel. You don't just want to go full send and be like, let me go loot this guy immediately. Especially if you're in a good spot, right? He's got ammo. He obviously doesn't have flashes right here. But... You know, he's in a good position where he can go challenge somebody. He's got plenty of ammo in sure. the secondary, which is the AK-74U. By the way, M4 is very good. I'm going to be doing a top 10 uh, loadout video here soon of top 10 guns that I think you should be using. Now, he's just trying to clear. Notice how he's clearing with intent. He's expecting enemies to actually be here when he turns a corner. Either the guy under me is not moving at all. Yep. Or 
I don't know if you can hear, he said either the guy's under me is not moving yeah. at all, but he's clearing it, right? He's assuming that the guy under him is just sitting in a corner and not moving, and he's not waiting to see him. He's kind of challenging this guy. Notice how he noticed the movement here. Jump peeking corners, trying to clear different areas of these buildings. Now, he doesn't really have much cash flow, right? He doesn't have loadout. He doesn't have a UAV. There he is. And now we can start to act on this information. Once we get the information, we've got to try to capitalize as quick as possible. Now, he's got a plate, so he's going to pull back, but he's going to re-engage this. Re-engaging fights is going to be crucial because you want to keep acting. We don't have a ton of information, so when we get information about somebody being around, us we want to be able to act on that clearing the corner watch him clear this next corner watch him clear cleared now he sees him now he can challenge again now joe has the slight advantage now he's going to put the pressure on right you really see how this has happened and keep in mind this could be a separate team but this is most likely the teammate of the guy he killed the first time so we want to be careful now he's able to finally get that kill right there there's the team wipe and it took a while guys fights definitely take longer especially if you're a resurgence player these fights definitely get drawn out a little bit they were fighting Yep, they were fighting somebody. That's why he keeps clearing this. You know, he knew that there were multiple teams around here just based on what he saw and what he heard. Oh, wait. You can hear people shooting. You just can't hear footsteps. So if you hear people shooting, you know, understand that there's multiple people. $2,100. Not enough for a UAV huh. yet. And I think one of these guys is... I think he might get a UAV here or yeah, somebody's going to grab... So I think somebody grabs his most wanted contract. And we're going to really see him use this proximity chat. I want to highlight this next part here where he actually gets in a car and he just kind of drives around until he can find somebody, until he can get that proc chat. You can really see how low cash is. Still doesn't have enough for a UAV. Still just kind of floating, still just kind of clearing. And this is where this there's a huge amount of dead space. Now he finally has enough. And let's go ahead and go back here for a second and slow this down because he's going to see somebody, right? And this is one a great example of him not assuming that it's just one player no, so he's gonna see one right in the road boom he's got this guy right here so now he's gonna go start to figure out how he wants to challenge this first things first he doesn't give away his location besides breaking glass but he's gonna pop uav there's one uav right there now we can see exactly where people are watch the anticipation with intent right here watch how he challenges knowing this guy's around the corner right he's ready for that guy even there oh takes a lot of damage he definitely hit some lag right there you can see that little skip but he takes a lot of damage right there guys the ttk is very fast these guys are doing a, or these guns are doing a lot of damage now he can immediately go push over and capitalize on the fact that he has this information you know he wants to go get this most wanted you cannot ping most wanted contracts by the way just keep that in mind so you can't actually ping them now he's going to go ahead he's got the level notice the arrow above for anybody that's not as familiar with that and and still has questions about that notice the arrow now he's on his level so he can go ahead and challenge right here he's anticipating and he's trying to, he's going to try to ping it that's why i bring it up i bring it up because he's going to try to ping this here right here and he's not going to be able to do it and by the way seven kills notice how long that first circle was he's going to try to ping it he just there's no pings you can try to you can ping where he is approximately but remember you could previously now? ping that actual most wanted contract guys if there are questions and things that you are struggling with already with warzone 2 let me know i'm down to do video ideas right he's able to get the kill right there good job and now he's got some cash flow here thirty three hundred dollars okay. not enough for a know. uav just yet but if you have specific questions things that you're struggling with let me know down in the comments below I, i'm always open to doing video ideas the other thing that i will say while he's going to grab this car right here i love doing community yeah. member gameplay reviews if you are looking to have your gameplay reviewed go ahead and check my discord as well as the instructions in the comments below i'll leave that for you submit your gameplay i might take a look at it i love viewing gameplay from you guys and trying to see where you're struggling things that you're doing well because a lot of other people struggle with that as well let's go ahead and watch this right here he cannot buy a uav at the buy station he just bought one out so now he's going to go ahead and get in the car and he's going to do two things right here he's going to get uav he's also going to use proximity chat so he's going to drive around let's go ahead and fast forward this a little bit speed this up yep and he's just going to listen. He's he's trying to see. He's looking to see what he can find. But he's also trying to get that proximity chat. What's the first thing that you're going to do with your teammate if you see a car outside? Hey, there's a car over there. That's what he's listening for. He's driving through. Not getting anything yet. Not getting anything. No buy station over here. So he's just going to keep driving. And you're kind of just driving until you run into somebody. That's all you can really do. You can drive to a buy station. Or you can just try to figure out where people actually are through that prox chat. And look, it's definitely a slower game, guys. There's no doubt about that it's a slower game. Now, right here, he sees the buy station. So he's trying to be cautious. He's not just full sending. The thing to highlight right here is the fact that when he goes to buy it, there's nothing here. Right? Which means somebody just previously somewhat recently bought a uav here that's a giveaway that somebody's close by man? 
we we still just have no idea where they actually are these two guys could be sitting in a corner not moving and that is one of the tough parts but it's an adjustment and like i said guys even with all these things even with all these things that make it tough joe still dropped a 20 plus kill game so it's still very possible trying to figure out where people are now he's going to go ahead and push across and what's going to end up happening is now he's going to get proximity chat so right here you're going to see the prox chat come up and he's going to use that to his advantage he hears somebody saying yep there's the prox chat now he immediately slows down right so that's what, something that i really want you to do if you're not sure where somebody is grab a bounty contract grab a uav i'm gonna fast forward this because he doesn't run into them for a little bit grab a bounty contract drive around and try to get prox chat you know grab a uav if you can throw a buy station he's just kind of clearing right here he's gonna fix his audio settings he's gonna have some fun with these guys talking back and now he's gonna go ahead and he's gonna start to engage but like he said he still has no idea where exactly they are yet so let's go ahead and see how he plays this scenario this is where we talk about gameplay strategy and positioning and pace of play i'm gonna be doing a positioning video here very soon because i think it's crucial now he gets those guys so now it's about the re-engage right so he disengages for a second okay now he's into a building once again acting on the information that he has right that's the only information it's not like he can go rotate elsewhere and find people like no he knows that they are around here so let's that's play it up and then let's re-engage let's figure out where exactly they move to and he knows he's trying to see if they're pushing right they, you would assume that they're going to push him they know he got out right around this building so they should be trying to engage the you know engage joe the question is how are they going to do it are they going to do it from afar are they going to full send there's not a lot of full sending going on because of how big the map is i mean even to get over to joe takes a little bit of time so let's go ahead and get in here let's go ahead and get into this fight right here he's going to play rooftop right catches the guy right there i mean he saw it and he's inside now joe's gonna get caught in a tough spot here he knows that there's pushing he knows that they're pushing you cannot sprint while plating so you got to be smart about that you're you don't want to get caught out in the open and now he can peek out this window because he has a better sense of where they actually are and now they should be pushing right now they have a pretty big advantage he hears them down low so he's going to challenge right here watch how he takes out one two right there's one now he's going to go ahead and reposition, already thinking about the second guy. By the way, notice, watch the anticipation with intent. Watch how he's expecting this guy. Yep, he's able to get that kill. And that just allows him to take less damage, which allows him to immediately engage the second guy after he reloads. Yep. Now he's going to go ahead and push back. Now this is where we start to get in a tough spot. He cannot sprint while plating. So he's going to be caught in a really bad spot here. He kind of has to engage this. He can try to keep running. But eventually, this guy's going to catch up to him. And Joe just can't get that kill right there. So let's go into Goosh here. Let's let's talk about his Goosh strategy because it is an important part of this game. And we've got to be able to win our Gooshes. And not only does he win his Gulag, he picks up two kills. So, you know, Gulag, even if you split with your teammate, should be a kill. It, you don't cost $4,000. Don't be the $4,000 teammate. That's another video I'm going to be doing here very soon, which is how to win your Gulag. But we don't want to be the guy that our teammate constantly has to buy back. So let's talk about Gulag strategy right here. Oh, no, I, I okay, we're, we're good, we're good. Let's go ahead and jump in. Let's re fast forward just a little bit. Okay, now he's going to go ahead and he's just going to push left side and play based on information, right? He's going to try to see what he can find. He's got the shotgun right here. And notice he plays this heady, right? That's a very difficult position for this guy to challenge him. Tags once. Now he keeps the pressure on. Tags again, moves again, gets the kill right there. And look, this is a very aggressive play. That's an execution play right there. We'll talk a little bit more about my strategy behind doing it and how important it is to get information. But notice that right there, he's able to tag that guy. He keeps the pressure on and then immediately challenges enemy number two. Now, right here, by the way, guys, notice that they are actually not on... Oh, they are on the mini map. They have been disappearing, so you want to take note, but you can always look for the yellow smoke. He's going to drop right down and get his loadout right here. He's got 11 kills, still 42 other people, so we know we're on a good game right here. And he is running Sniper, and he is running Bullfrog right here, or the the oh, the oh mini bock. The mini bock. we got to get out of the habit of calling these different guns, right? We've got the Fennec. We've got the MP5. We've got the, the Bullfrog Bison. You know, we got to get out of the habit and start calling them by their actual names. Now, right here, he's going to go ahead and just 
just try to figure out again no information right here you know we're just gonna fast forward he's trying to figure out where people are and he's got nothing and part of part of when you are roaming around here you know he's obviously looting up a little bit he's trying to see if he can find anybody with his thermal scope but you're just trying to use a little bit of audio to understand where shooting might be you know, by the way the other thing you can use this is a little I'll, I'll see if i can find it a little bit later you can actually use your compass your compass gives away shooting okay so we're up here now Really now he's going to go ahead and start to figure out where some people are and he's going to hear shooting at which point he can start to engage them but he's just been kind of wandering right for for a little bit now and now he's finally going to be able to see people and and it's then it's just about execution guys watch how he does not assume boom headshot see ya watch how he he doesn't just go loot that guy right head on a swivel we got to be thinking about where else people are he go he gets that break now what's the important thing to take away here they were fighting, right? So with that armor break right there, that could be the guy he killed or that could be another team. So you got to really be thinking about that. And watch how he's just hes just trying to scan. He's just scanning in case. Now he catches this enemy right in front of him, right? So that is the importance. And look, I knew that was going to happen, which is why I highlight it. But it's something that you really need to And What do you notice? That was actually the player from that was the teammate of the first guy that he killed nice. so there's still that other guy floating around here somewhere potentially and and he might not be right maybe that was the same player i have no idea but you gotta be thinking about that stuff so you don't get caught off guard you cannot rely on footstep audio so if this guy's still floating around nice, you nice, you're nice. probably not going to hear him right i hope they fix it but you know for right now we cannot rely on that we've got to rely on what we're actually seeing 13 kills yep now, somebody popped a UAV. Look at the mini-map, right? No no buy stations around anywhere. So good chance that it came from this direction somewhere. Now, it, we just need to find him. So he's going to go in and push over, try to start seeing what he can find. 13 kills here, 30 with 30 other people. By the way, this game has been going on quite some time now. These are 20 to 25 to 30-minute games. Trying to see what he can find. This I don't love this thermal. I don't know if he loves this thermal, but this was also day one. This was di his first day playing. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm guessing he did not buy his loadout with five thousand dollars. But floor loot's very good. By the way, if you don't have your guns leveled up, I think you can still compete at least until something like plunder comes out or something that's a little bit better to level up your guns. I tried DMZ, but just didn't love that for leveling guns. Right here, he's gonna buy UAV, so now he can figure out where people are again. He knows that there are two people over to the right. Contracts, guys, are going to be crucial. Bounty contracts, safe cracker. The more UAVs up you can get, but again, we're kind of limited. You do, you just don't want a situation where you can't buy a UAV, and there is one on the buy station. Right here, look at the positioning, the pace of play, and the game strategy. He's not going. He's just patient. He's waiting. He's trying to get a pick. He's trying to get a kill before he pushes in, before giving away his location. Right here, boom, hits it. Three plates broken. Snipers don't headshot, so you got to be really smart. Now he's going to go ahead, and he's going to push in here knowing he has the advantage. But once again, watch the anticipation. He's ready for that guy, and he just, I mean, he just puts wow, these guys wow, to work. Wow, There's wow. the team wipe. Very easy kill. Had a good advantage. Took advantage of the fact that he flashed the guy. And again, that not only does it give him... Not only does it give him the information, or not only does it flash the guy, it gives him the information that he's close, right? Now he sees him, but that guy can't do anything at that point. And that guy might be flashed as well. I can't even tell, but they might both be flashed in that scenario. 15 kills thus far. By the way, it's just been a matter of, of finding people. The execution's been super clean. Of course, it's tough to execute in this game, train a bunch of stuff out, but... You know, at the end of the day, it's one of those where it's about finding people. And he's done that through UAVs. He's done it through prox chat. And he's done it through also just putting himself in kind of not necessarily hot areas, but just areas where people are going to be. You know, these these areas where there are a ton of buildings. And we're going to, yeah, he's sniping people now. Let's go ahead and slow this down a little bit. We'll, we'll play it one and a half because not too much happens here. He's just going to keep looking. He's going to snipe again, this guy out of the air. You can see snipers are good, but you just got to be able to get that second shot off quick right here. I'm still going towards an a I, I haven't found my my go-to gun just yet i'm still rocking ars hcr which is technically an lmg the rpk i like a lot i do like the lockman 556 which is an ar um i do like the lockman sub those are kind of my four main go-to's right now but i'm still playing around with a lot of stuff He's going to go in and precision. Like I said, guys, he knows there's people over here, but not in a great spot to push, especially as Gulag's closed. I mean, he wouldn't be been able to go to Gooch anyway, but he's starting to focus on this end game. Tag right there. Yep. Tag right there. Now we're able to get the down. Nope, not quite, but he is able to take shots there. 
and, and notice guys sniping is very difficult there's the kill finally right so there's the two shot kill on a sniper so you're gonna have to get shots off pretty quick there's kill number 16 let's slow this down a little bit he's just taking pop shots right here it's one of the biggest things with the snipers you just got to take the shot i mean at the end of the day some of you just try to line up perfectly and make sure it's perfect just take the shot and see what happens now he's going to go in and get positioning, right? He's going to rotate early here, knowing the fact that he can get this high ground and be in a really good spot. By the way, notice circle is closed. There is the down and thirst right there. Oh, he did get the thirst. Almost. But he's going to reposition around. Not just assume it's one player. He's got to be smart here. Yep, there's the limb. And no, he does not, for my Resurgence players, no, he does not get mini-map pings after, right, get here, after he gets the kill. Now, let's really start focusing on endgame here. Endgame positioning is absolutely crucial because you don't want to be caught in a bad spot rotating out in the it open, low ground, across. because, I mean, you're never going to win that way. Tag right there. Can he get him? Down right, or down and thirst right there, or team wipe right there. So he gets that kill, okay. right? Pop two, shots. Yep, yep there's more. another one. Notice this guy he saw just in front of him. Let's see how he sees this guy. I, he sees him somehow. He probably just sees him floating around. Yeah, he sees him jumping right there. Yeah, he saw him right there. That second time he peeked. Gets the tag. Watch this second one right here. So that's where you do. You want to be scanning around looking. You don't always just want to be looking kind of where your crosshairs are. You want to be looking over this way and this way and just looking for movement. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the biggest two. things. Yep. This is so yeah. obvious, guys. And it's it sounds obvious, but it's not something that a lot of you think about. The map is very stationary, right? For the most part. Yeah, there's some leaves falling. Gas is moving. There's, you know, maybe planes every once in a while. But for the most part, this game is very stationary. Meaning if you see movement, there is a good possibility that it is a player. By the way, he goes down. He's going to self. He's going to be able to pick up this kill right here. He's got to react quick. This guy's going to jump up here. But he's also broken. So Cho is able to make it work. He gets that team wipe. Going back to what I was saying, there's not a lot of movement, right? It, it's Guys, I know it sounds obvious, but I guarantee you not a lot of you are thinking about it. If you see any bit of movement out of the corner of your eye, it's most likely a player. Now, he gets lucky with the UAV right there. That allows him to make this next push. By the way, there's your 20 kill mark. So, he's going to pick up a few more here. And he's got to play positioning. Now, he's in a really bad spot here. I mean, he's got to push so there. far out in the open just because of where Circle actually put push. So, he's in a pretty rough spot when it comes to this rotation and he's trying to get a pick he's trying to get a kill on one of these two players he just can't get one of them to peek as soon as he shoots he gives away his location so we want to be strategic about that there's the obviously armor tag he's going to break him here in a second after he checks his right side right as soon as he shoots that first time what does he expect he expects that teammate that's in there to take a look at joe so that's why he's looking over that direction Meanwhile, that other guy's probably plating up right now. And sure enough, there he is. There's the armor crack. Can he get the down right there? Not quite. So, uh, I love Semtex, by the way. I think Semtex are a really good option. There's the break. Three plates broken. Can he get the down? Not quite, but he's got to push in. This is where rotating late with oh, gas man, can get very, very difficult. And that actually looked like he took a lot There's of damage. No he actually didn't take that much damage right there. He actually didn't take that much. Able to get that kill. Down. Thirsted. Yep, played up underwater. You can actually play it up underwater, by the way. Just as an FYI. 21 kills. Few other people left here. He's got to get plated and then start to figure out how he's going to get into circle. Be a bush, baby. Yep, he's in the bush. Can't see him right in there. So he's going to use the bush to his advantage, which you can absolutely do. Don't hide in bushes in first circle. Hide in bushes during the last circle. Now he's going to end up rotating up here, guys. He's He knows he has to try to get to these buildings up here if he wants to have a chance. He can, of course, swim, which it's hard, to, especially at range. You know, when we're talking about these end games, there are people that are fighting at range and a little bit further away that are rotating with circles. So we can use that to our advantage and, you know, swim underneath the water where they can't actually see us. These video, I mean, these, I will say, this is a little bit different for me. If you've been with me this far, thank you so much, guys. I, uh, these videos are definitely going to be longer just because these videos are 20, or these games are 25 minutes long. Okay, let's go ahead and get the down. Knocked right there, but he knows there's another one. He knows there's two. Right, so he sees the second one. The only thing I would have done differently here, and again, Joe's a great player. I want, I'd probably push this right here. You know, if you, if you look at, again, in the moment, 21 kills, right? You're probably not paying too much attention because of what's going on to who all's left. But you've got a 2v1v1 situation, right? There's three enemies left beside you. You know where two of them are, and then you just got to figure the last one. One of them's already knocked, so I'd probably go keep the pressure on here. He's going to throw the Semtex down, and now he's got to push back up. 
Now he's gonna nade one. There's that guy. So you saw that guy drop. So now he knows he's got to go. And watch him. He uses his Semtex to try to do damage. He uses the flashes to try to get information about where they are. Doesn't see anything yet. There's one. Able to get a clean knock right there. Immediately needs to focus on the second enemy. 1v1v1 situation at this point. He knows one's right across. Now we got a clutch. Now we got a clutch. He knows one's right here. And he's going to end up going down. Tough ending for Joe right there, but really good game all the way around. Like I said, guys, of course, I knew what was going to happen at the end. So hindsight's always 20-20. I would have pushed that team in the building, or that would have been the play to keep that pressure on, not let them get back up, at which point it's just a 1v1 for the clutch. But I hope you found today's video helpful about how to find people, pace of play, and gameplay strategy. As I always say, let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.